Last time on Out Chasing Stars, we set sail from Pasarwajo down to Labuan Bajo on Flores Island. The wind was quite light for this passage, so we forced ourselves to make good use of our spinnaker and ended up with our best spinnaker sail ever. Things only got better from there, as I got to play host to four lovely ladies and cross some projects off the to-do list. Once Gina and Sasha had left, we set out with Sarah to enjoy the incredible Komodo National Park. Babe, it looks like we're on the move again. We are on the move again. We are going to... Yeah, let's see. Nope. How do you pronounce these things? Sibayar Kessel. Sibayar Kessel. Which is not technically in Komodo. It's slightly oh. outside of it. So we don't have to pay park fees. Well, we don't good. have to pay park fees and it's supposed to be very good snorkeling. Which we want to do because Sarah's never been yes, snorkeling! Yes, first time for everything. Yeah, we're definitely going to need a camera on that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What's, what's going on out here, ladies? We are getting Sarah all year for her first yes. snorkel. My first snorkel ever. I know. Yeah. I gotta say, yeah. it's pretty amazing to me that you visited us your third time, and this is the uh, the first time you're going snorkeling. But... Yeah, no snorkeling in Canada, and no snorkeling it was too cold in Panama in Canada. Canada. And it the Panama was Canal was way too dirty. Yeah, well, not have gone And there's like no Canada, reefs no. in Canada, no. so. No, so finally, we'll check yeah. this off the bucket list. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And her first snorkel is going to be in a blue hole. That's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, so yeah. there's a beach over there. We're going to take the dinghy, and then there's a short walk to the other side. Yeah. The blue hole with a pier all the way like out into the, kind of the center. Mm -hmm. so, so we're going yeah. in. Get a high one. And go in. <laughs> we successfully got up on the beach and set out to find our way over to the blue hole. With a big assist from Google Maps, we did find a way over to it, only to discover a slight problem. down this way here. These boards are not fit for supporting people. No. It's okay. We are going to abort the mission. Safety first. Safety first. Well, I'm pretty sure there's going to be good snorkeling back at the boat anyways. Oh yeah. Yes. We will go back to the boat and we'll snorkel. Yep. Great hike though. <laughs> so ladies, the blue hole is a bit of a bust. What's, what's, good? what's the plan now? All right, so there's these, Strike Horizons is right there. There's this uh, rock formation here, which is pretty sweet. And then there's the mooring ball. So we have tied up to the mooring ball. Yeah. And we're gonna go snorkeling. See what there is to see here. Scope it out. First time for everything. Yeah, and a, and a dinghy snorkel, you know, we're, we're not giving you quite the deep end, but you know, medium into the pool. Yeah, exactly. Gotta start somewhere. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
very magically done. Ish. The next day, we had a lazy morning before heading over to Lo Buaya on Rinka Island. This was the spot where we were going to find our Komodo dragons, but we were trying to wait for all the tour boats to clear out before we arrived. Turns out, that's an impossible task. So it was absolutely wild in here today. Uh, it got so packed. The, there's like a bunch of just day charter tour boats or dive boats that come here to go see the uh, Komodo dragons. There were like, I swear, probably 50 or 60 boats that were anchored up just in that spot. And it was it was very tight and some of the boats coming very close to both each other, but also cruise boats or cruising boats. So uh, it's an interesting afternoon. Uh, as you can see, it's definitely cleared out now. I think all of them go kind of elsewhere so they can be prepared for a first stop the next day. So we'll just enjoy being here by ourselves tonight. And then I think 7 a.m. tomorrow, Komodo Dragon time. Exactly. Oh, they, they give you a battery with it. That's good. Oh, just a kid. Oh. We're really going crazy. Yeah, what are you ladies working on back here? Was that a beehive? <clears throat> oh, I'm white. Mm. Killed it. Uh, we are <laughs> trying to replace the ignition switch on the grill, which apparently means you have to take apart the whole grill. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You want to oh, look, there's the, <laughs> the nut that I lost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And the remainder of the beehive. Oh, that? and Sarah's working hard too, huh? Yep. Nothing like a relaxing vacation on Starry Horizons. I gotta work for my keep, you know? Yeah. It's, it's a hard day. Didn't even ask her for help, guys. She was just like, oh, let me put my engineering degree to good use. That's right. Watch out! Ladies right. are badass on this boat. We try. We try. Am I hearing some celebrating out here? Amy, announce it. We got it. The ignition switch works. Woohoo! Yeah. Pork on the grill tonight. Yeah. <laughs> this is the cleanest our grill has ever been mm -hmm. because this is the first time I really took it apart. And scrubbed and, and scrubbed host. everything. Amy yeah. did a great job. Well, yeah. We held you... things together, screwed it back in. It's ready to go. It was challenging, but we got it. Go Team RPI. Yeah, Team RPI. Girl power. <laughs> Hey Sarah. Good morning. What are we doing today? We're going to see the Komodo dragons. It's dragon day. Dragon day. Which we gotta be careful because they've got a very venomous bite. Yes. You have to be very careful. They are aggressive and pretty much could kill you. Yes, so we, we don't want to be a, a newspaper headline. No. Just wanna Three tourists enjoy from people. a nice distance. Yes. It's early, they say this is the best time. Yeah, we actually got it so. before sunrise today. Poor Sarah on vacation. I don't know what time it's just is, mean. So we're okay. Yeah. <laughs> Several other cruising boats had the same idea, so there was a fairly large group ashore in the morning. There have been recorded incidents of tourists being attacked by Komodo dragons, so each group is led into the park by a guide. We got the appropriate safety speech and had barely set off into the park before the star attraction made its first appearance. <laughs> Well, that did not take too long to see a Komodo dragon at all. Kind of crazy. Uh, I guess that guy was about three years old. They lived to be about 50 or 60. Man, they must get big. Our group had elected to take the long track around the park in the hope of seeing more wildlife. It wasn't long before we found signs we were on the right path. So our guide stopped to show us this pile of, like, it looks like cement powder, and it's Komodo poop. Lovely. Apparently the calcium in the bones they eat makes it like a white powder, and they're also, they don't drink water, they get their, their hydration from the meat. So it's very dry. It's kind of weird looking. I guess if I catch up, we don't want to get eaten. Don't want to get left behind. Yeah.
found yourself a Komodo dragon, huh? He did. A teenager. He's kind of, there's a water buffalo right there too, so he's kind of sneaking up on him. It's going to be getting a little, uh, little hunty going on, huh? dry season right now which is kind of cool because when we we're walking by all these streams and riverbeds and stuff uh, you can just see all the rocks and everything and it's kind of wild to just imagine what it would look like uh, you know during the wet season actually water and stuff running through and apparently we've been told that's where the Komodo dragons will actually go hunt the buffalo they will actually go catch them at the uh, the watering holes rather than just kind of out in the open so I guess we're we're safe as long as we're not interrupting them getting some water is, there, is this the nest here? Yes, so this is what they dig and where they sleep in, why it is roped off uh, because they are currently some sleeping. And I don't know if you can see, it looks like a rock. So they're camouflaged very, very well, but there's one sleeping by the nest. It's still the end of nesting season, so there still may be eggs they need to guard. That's so cool. If you can see. We learned that when Komodo dragons are hatched, they are incredibly defenseless to predators and even adult Komodos. As a result, they spend the first few years of their lives up in trees in relative safety until they are big enough to survive on the ground. What do we think of the Komodos? It's good. Very good. Yeah. I'm really glad we did the long tour, which was like two and a half hours. Yep. But we saw not only the Komodos, we saw the buffalo and deer and some monkeys. Yes. So a we lot of wildlife. Whole, yeah, a lot of wildlife in the two and a half hours. Yeah. Definitely worth it. It was great. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. exactly what we were hoping for then. Now we'll uh, go pick up anchor, go find a place, hopefully more snorkeling. Is more that yes. so what's on snorkeling. the agenda? Yes. Especially and, after the and, hike. And less yeah. sunburn though. Less sunburn. A lot of sunscreen. Yeah. I'm feeling a little bit of pain. <laughs> the sun in this part of the world is incredibly intense. So we slathered lots of sunscreen on Sarah and set off for our next stop at Gili Lawa Laut. There was a no anchoring sign on the beach, so we got incredibly fortunate to find one of the first come, first serve moorings available. Once we were secure, we didn't waste any time getting back into the water. What are you ladies doing? All right, so today we had our hike. Yeah. We just had a snorkel. Mm -hmm. And now we're going paddle boarding. Oh my goodness. Yeah. We're taking turns blowing them up. Cause it's exhausting. Cause this is workout number three, inflating the paddle boards. And then workout number four is actually paddle boarding. Staying on the paddle boards. <laughs> Which shouldn't be that hard. It's been quiet. <coughs> have you paddle boarded before? I have. How many times? 
once in Australia, but I didn't <laughs> fall off. All right, good job. Yes. We've got our two inflatable paddle boards, so while the ladies went and did their thing, I was happy to do mine. Gili Lawa Laut was a beautiful anchorage and treated us to an amazing sunset. But we wouldn't stay here long as we were determined to track down a boat we hadn't seen in a long, long time. There is pretty much no wind today. We've been seeing uh, true wind speeds around but not. That spinnaker won't even work on that. So uh, we want to be on the move though and we are headed over to an island called Gili Banta, I believe. And this is, this is really cool. So there's a boat over there that we're gonna go meet up with. And it is a boat called Field Trip. Some of you may have heard of them. They've done some videos and blogs. But uh, way before we even bought Starry Horizons, we had done a charter back in St. Martin. We sailed over to St. Bart's, dropped the hook, and I was like, hmm, I recognize one of the boats in this anchorage. And it was Field Trip. So, you know, we've been following their blog and Antares 44, which is their type of boat. That was one of the ones we were thinking about buying. So we, you know, very quietly went over and knocked and said, hey, we love your blog and videos. Can we say hi? And, you know, it was like our fan moment, which was so cool. And they've been out cruising ever since. And we finally caught up to them. So they are here doing some diving. We're going to go check out and say hi. Uh, spend maybe, hopefully, at least tonight, maybe tomorrow as well with them. And see how the wind does before we have to set sail off towards Lombok to get Sarah over there for her flight. So this is going to be really exciting. Mark and Sarah were the first cruisers we ever met. And their generosity and kindness has stuck with us all these years. It was so great to finally see them again, this time on our own boat halfway around the world. They are both avid divers, so we made plans for a dive the next day, but found we couldn't quite wait that long to get in the water again. Okay! Woo! No chickening! Sarah, you, you have to go for more stop points than that. Yep. So what? My bra totally came down. <laughs> Man, I'm at the wrong she spot. Children. Go, Sarah, go! Woo! Is that a cannonball? Or dive? <laughs> Do it. Cannonball. Cannonball? Cannonball. That might be painful. I'll Come do on. it. on your butt. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you should challenge those kids to a cannonball contest. <laughs> Bunch of crazies down there. See, we can swim. Come join us in Crazyville, babe. Oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Come join us, Charlie. <laughs> Ready? Okay, that was me touching you, like Sarah. <laughs> We had so much fun in Crazyville that someone else wanted to get in on the action as well. What's going on out here? Right there. Right there. A man array? Right there, right there, right there, right there. I can see a little bit of it. <laughs> we just saw a manta ray. Oh, that's yes. pretty exciting. Well, we were all washing our hair. <laughs> just after we got done swimming, huh? Yes. Yep. Couldn't have gotten here about five yes. minutes earlier. And you can cut. Oh, oh he he's just, got a he little. He waved again. He waved again. He's waving. Well, that's very nice. It's a he. Of course. How do we know? I don't know why, but it's a he. And he waved. And he waved again. Aww. He's right wow. by field trip now. Yeah. Oh, he just oh, turned. He's turning. Come back. I think it is physically impossible for Amy to pass up a chance to swim with manta rays, so we hopped in the water again. 
Unfortunately, the manta had disappeared, but the coral here was pretty spectacular. Hey you. Hi. What are you working on? We're going diving. Ooh, yeah we are. <laughs> Complete Field with trip. uh local dive guides. <laughs> Field trip sounds like the Komodo Park dive experts. Yeah. So we're gonna go out and at least do one dive, you'll see how it is. And and poor poor Sarah in there. Oh. It's gonna have to hang out for just a little bit. I know, I gotta hold the fort down on the boat. I might snorkel to shore, maybe paddleboard. Read a book. Hey, I got a full plate. Okay, it's thank goodness. Gonna you're not gonna, you're not gonna dive boredom while we're gone. I don't think so. Okay. Phew. <laughs> and we gotta get ready. Yes. Mark and Sarah took us around to the tip of the island, and we all jumped in. The current was incredibly strong, so we were all especially careful to stay close together. But the coral and the sea life made this one of our best dives ever. So Amy, you just got back from the dive. What's My third going on? dive of the day. It's on a roll. I'm on a roll because Mark has been taking me diving, which is awesome. And uh, what did you just come back to? So we're up here having sundowners, and we have this beautiful view of the volcano, which we've seen smoking. Even from Labu and Bajo one night, we saw it smoking. We had a very good view tonight, though. I think this tonight, is the best view. Tonight we it. can see a lava flow. It is blowing. Yes and there's like a it's brightly lit river coming down the side of the volcano. Yep. That's kind of wild. It was like a little bit of a flash and then it got brighter and then grew and now it's kind of just hovering around the same color. People live on this island and there's always smoke <laughs> on do. the volcano. They yeah. said the last time it had a serious eruption was I think he said in the 80s. But um, yeah, there's definitely lava it's, flow going on right yeah, now. Yeah, and there's still lava coming out. Well, I'm not going to be not sad that lot, we're leaving tomorrow, then. It's a great view. We have a perfect view. Yeah, oh, there's more it. coming down! That is wild. Oh, there's even more. Yeah, useless. Great! <laughs> not going to have quite the range as the big camera, huh? Watch. You know what? <laughs> we're going to be old school and watch without Snapchat. What? Who's ever thought of that I know. before? We had to leave the next day in order to get Sarah to Lombok in time for her flight, but there were two things we needed to do first. Fly the drone and swim with more manta rays.
Kara is flying the drone. I'm flying the drone. Oh my goodness. I went from drone catcher to drone flyer. Whoa. Whoa. Wow, it's windy. Between the mantas and the amazing coral, I think we did a pretty good job ruining snorkeling for Sarah. Nothing will ever be quite as good. Hey y'all, thank you very much for watching our video with Sarah visiting again for the third time. Uh, we had an absolute blast and packed a whole lot into her trip with us. The Komodo dragons were awesome, the snorkeling was awesome, and I'm sure Amy would say, other than having Sarah visit, the mantas were the best part of the whole thing. Uh, Amy really loves those mantas, but uh, I do want to mention that Field Trip took a little bit of a hiatus for making videos, and they just started up again. So if you are curious to check it out, I'm going to uh, put a little link down below. Make sure you go watch their videos. They're going on some pretty interesting paths, heading back from Asia into the South Pacific again. So check them out. We've got another passage coming up, this one with Sarah, her first overnight sail. So, Lots of good stuff coming. Thanks for watching. We'll see y'all next time.